In our modern culture today, if you want to make somebody really squirm and get uncomfortable, then ask them to sit still and to be still. Most people get really uncomfortable. There's a war over this. Hi, I'm Mark DeJesus doing a solo episode of Transformed You today, and I wanted to take some time to just share my heart on an important transformational habit that I've been practicing, my wife has been practicing, we're teaching our children and even the people that we help. It is the art and habit of learning to get still. It seems one of the biggest wars over people's lives is just being able to get still and get quiet. We start squirming and immediately we go to grab our cell phones. We look at the news. We turn on the TV. At the end of the day, when we need to unwind from the things that we've been dealing with and stressing, we find something that stimulates our minds or gets us into a mode of maybe amusement, which (laughs) amuse means, muse means think, amuse means don't think, but it's not a refreshing don't think. It's just a zoning out in practices that don't restore us. Nothing against those things. Well, what I want to get to is we struggle with the habit of being still and being okay with moments of nothing. Where are you at in this journey? Where are at are you in this process? Because one of the most profound things that we can be and live in as believers is to learn to be still and be confident in the rest of the moment. The Bible talks about being still. Peace, be still. There's these words that bring about the power of what it means to be confident in the moment. You see, we're sons and daughters. We're human beings. We're not human doers. And the practice of stillness is so important. And if I was to ask any Christian, do you think it's important to get still? I would get a unanimous yes. But if we were to look at our schedules and our habits... We'd find it not there. There is such a war over this being implemented and practiced. I mean, try it for yourself. Try to sit still and get still in a moment of nothingness. No agenda, no trying to figure stuff out. Just to be still and breathe in the moment. Your to-do list starts to come up. Your problems start to come up. Or, even more troublesome for so many, you face some of the issues of your heart that you've kind of been ignoring and not dealing with. It's interesting, there's certain people that I talk to and uh, who are later in their years, maybe they're heading into retirement or they're in places where they're they're looking to uh, not work anymore. One of the things they say is, the secret is, I gotta stay busy, right? And I understand that. I understand that they just don't wanna have an idle life, they don't wanna just do nothing, they wanna be productive with their lives and, and feel that they're contributing But let's look at that underlying that statement, I just got to stay busy. Are we really just uncomfortable with stillness? Are we really just uncomfortable with quiet? Are we uncomfortable in that moment of, well, maybe I'll face some of the issues of my heart that I don't want to deal with because I've kind of shoved them down, denied them. Maybe I'll, I, I, I don't know how to relate to God in the moment of stillness. I'm so used to doing that I don't know how to take the engines and bring down the RPMs. The practice of stillness became very real in my life as I was learning to overcome anxiety, panic attacks, OCD kind of thinking and problems. I had a real hard time keeping my mind in a good place. Really hard time. And you could pray for me and you could do anything you could to help me, but I needed to learn to live a lifestyle, a lifestyle, not just a moment of breakthrough, but learning to cultivate a lifestyle. And that's why we're talking about transformational habits. I had to learn the power, the blessed power, the secret power of getting still for moments and doing nothing and really allowing the blessing of that moment to invade my life. And so it was through learning to overcome anxiety where I said, okay, if if I've got to train my mind, my heart, my spirit, my body to get into a place of overcoming anxiousness and stress 
and panic attacks and constant, constant going thinking, I've got to learn to condition myself into the opposite, which is peace, stillness, rest. So I incorporated into my lifestyle moments of daily peace and rest. There's even a video that uh, I'll, I'll talk about how I cultivated peace in my life. I'll share more with you on this. But I had to move, and there was three stages I moved through. The first was, I really should practice stillness, right? But when we say we should do something, we don't really ever get to it. So I moved from, I should do it, to I must. I must have a moment, a pit stop every day of quiet, of stillness, of nothingness, to just be in the presence of God and knowing who I am and resting in that moment and getting the strength I need in that moment. So I I began to approach it from, this is not an option. I must do this because my health, my sanity, my stability is at stake and I must. But then that didn't last, that doesn't make it last forever. I had to move into a new stage, which was I get to. I get to do this every day. Because once I cultivated that moment of peace, that home base of stillness, then I got excited about it. I looked forward to it. And now every day, I get to. I get to. So I moved from I should to I must to I get to. And I think that's important in any habit we're trying to develop in our lives. And so that was something that was important for me. And a cornerstone scripture is Psalm 4610 that we would be still and know that I am God. And it's such a rich yet simple statement. And I want to encourage all of our listeners, all of our viewers, to put into their regular arsenal the capacity, the habit, the delight in just getting still. But it's going to take some time. It's going to take some practice. Because the moment we get still, I don't know about you, but the moment we get still, my to-do list becomes crystal clear. We see the enemy attack over keeping us from being still, right? It's like, just when I, five minutes ago, I had no idea what I needed to do, uh, what the next step was, but then as I got still, now all of a sudden my to-do list is getting clear, and then I'm on my to-do list, and I'm off to the races, getting busy again. Or I get still, and all of a sudden I'm thinking about a problem, and then I'm going to deal with that problem, and then Next thing you know, I'm doing this, this, and this, and this. And three hours later, I went, wait a second. I was trying to get still. And here I am, not even realizing how much I got off track. So I had to understand that the power of stillness is learning to know the power, the sovereignty, the majesty, the glory of who God is in the stillness of that moment. To quiet my heart, to reset my inner life, so that I can be rooted and grounded in who he is. Because most of us live our day on the basis of it's all on me, the pressure's on. We don't know how to cast our cares to God. We don't know how to live in his divine rest. We don't know how to bring our RPMs down. So we live in the pressure cooker. Stillness is a marker, a reminder of where we need to daily return to to recalibrate our heart. The psalm writer said, He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. There are areas of my soul that need daily attention, ways of thinking, belief systems, mindsets, areas of agreement that I need to learn to let God renovate, to restore. And the best place for that to happen is by the still waters. It's not going to happen in the go, 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 busy, 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 cram, cram, cram the schedule, do, do, do. It's going to be in the stillness where the perspective gets enhanced. So what is stillness? What, What am I talking about here when I talk about getting still? Number one, I'm not talking about reading your Bible, although that is incredibly important and ought to be a habit every day. Don't mistake me. But when I'm talking about stillness, I'm not talking about reading something. I'm not even talking about talking to God. That is prayer. Prayer is talking and listening to God. Stillness is just quieting everything inside of you. Stillness is not looking over your to-do list. 
planning, scheduling. It's not trying to figure out problems. It's not trying to look at what things you need to change or fix or your problems or your issues. Stillness is not watching TV, engaging social media, looking at your phones. It's literally sitting, being still, and doing nothing. And I know people, this might sound complicated, but if I want to define it, stillness is quieting yourself, getting your heart and mind still. And for a lot of people, this moment, you'll be spending the whole time just trying to quiet yourself down because the RPMs are so intense. I know, I get that. I relate to that. It's quieting yourself, getting your heart and mind still, taking a break from doing while focusing on just being. It's the art of doing nothing. So this became a value for me because I know that peace was such an important facet of my life. That I know in order to go where I need to go, I need to learn how to live in the kind of peace that Jesus carried when he was in the boat, sleeping while the storm was raging, water is filling the boat, and he's fast asleep. There's a peace available in the kingdom of God, but how are you going to find it unless you come into agreement with it in the stillness of the moment to then carry that throughout your day, throughout your journey, and throughout your life? I want to encourage you emphatically, we need to start making value and time for stillness. We've been working on teaching this to our kids with all their energy and all their constant go-go of learning to get still, learning to calm ourselves. We live in a day and age where stress is on the rise, anxiety disorders are on the rise, mental health issues are on the rise, uh, bipolar mood disorders, depression, all kinds of mental health issues are on the rise and we have no gauge in knowing how to get still. I know I didn't, it was a foreign subject to me. But I know that my first step in practicing stillness allowed me to make room for connecting to the peace of God, to growing that muscle, to learning what it means to be in rest. Because this doing nothing is not laziness. It's not not taking action in life. No. Actually, it's hard work getting into stillness. Try it. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's work. It's actually easier for most people to just get up and start the day and just get busy. It's actually a lot of work to get still. That's why the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews, be diligent to enter into rest. Work at. Be consistent at. Put effort into getting into rest. It sounds contradictory, but that's where the battle lies because the more we engage that peace, the more we engage that rest, the more power we're learning to live out of because that's where God lives. God lives in peace. He lives in rest. He lives in divine confidence. Be still. Calibrate yourself into stillness to calibrate into God's majesty and who he is. In stillness, I line my frequency up with his confidence in the midst of everything that I'm going through. I find that in practicing stillness, my recovery is better. That if I find myself getting off kilter, I'm prone to certain disempowering thoughts or my mood's getting out of whack or anxiousness and stress is wanting to come in. I know I have a grid that can reset and it's immediately I can go back to a moment to get still, to get quiet. I find my mood improves. That even just 10 minutes of getting still Now, come on, folks, 10 minutes. If you don't have 10 minutes to practice something, you don't have a life and something needs to change. 10 minutes. And if you can't do 10, start with five. If you can't do five, start with three. Don't disempower your journey. Do steps that help you to get encouraged and strengthened to see the power of what can happen in these kind of practices. I find that my stress response is way stronger when I'm daily having a home-based moment. And yes, reading the word, yes, praying, yes, intercession are those aspects of daily habits. But what I'm talking about is not those things. And maybe this gets integrated into that, but I'm talking about just getting still in a moment of nothing. I find that I have greater strength over discouragement. 
I just, I'm able to look at circumstances with greater tenacity because I gave my mind, my brain, my heart, the ability to reset. You see, your mind actually needs moments of boredom. My kids tell me all the time, I'm bored. And they talk about it as though it's a crippling disease that's coming over them, right? That they're just going to fall apart and collapse and, and go into a pile of mush. Mom, I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm going to drown. The boredom is just drowning me. What you need to know is you need moments where you're quote unquote bored because then you can be able to focus on what you need to focus on, to be able to think in patterns that are helpful for your life and helpful for your journey, to strengthen those pathways. They've even found studies that practices of stillness and, 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 and learning to cultivate that actually strengthen neural pathways. They strengthen certain aspects of the mind so that your memory is better, your recall is better, your focus, your ability to focus is better. You get overall mind and body health. Your stress response gets strengthened. Your stress recovery. Many of you have areas where you're needing healing in your stress response. I know I have, and there's areas I'm continuing to heal and to strengthen my stress response. And the moment of stillness helps to strengthen and expand the power of that. And so I want to encourage you today. Now, if you don't see any value for this, it probably won't happen. But if you see the value for it and you say, Mark, you know what? You're right. I need more of this in my life. I need to be still and know that he is God. I need to rest in the moment of what that means. I need to just let that soak into my members so that then I take that and I put it on the tapestry of everything I look at throughout the course of my day. That now becomes my template versus waking up and my template becomes the emails that come in, the phone calls that come in, the things I got to do and all those things. I've now created a new template for life, a new template for my day that now places the majesty, splendor and glory of who God is over everything. And now my eyesight is tuned into that frequency. I find I hear God way better in learning to practice stillness. I'm reminded of when Elijah was running from Jezebel and he's hiding in the cave and God shakes the mountains and the heavy winds and all this stuff happens. And he, he wasn't in those things, but it said, and then the still small voice. I find there are so many rich things that God wants to say to me, but I need to get still to hear some of those deeper, richer statements that are in his word and that his spirit wants to speak to my life to really get it and let it resonate. So I began to practice getting still. And I have to tell you, I was the total opposite of that. And practicing stillness was very uncomfortable. But at first, I would just play some simple music and just quiet myself because I knew I had a road to go and a journey to go. And I would do what some of some people I know they'd call soaking. And I would just play some soft worship music and just soak in God's presence and just learn to get still. But then over time, I, I learned to not have any music, have nothing stimulating my mind to get me thinking about lyrics or, hey, that guitar riff is really cool. Let me think about that. And, and, and oh, maybe I'd like to practice that on the guitar or learn. Oh, man, I'd like to go sing that. No, I want to get still. And so then I would just take moments and just quiet. So how do you want to begin to do this? First and foremost, get a time and get a place. I'm not talking about sitting for an hour. I'm not even talking about half an hour. I want to encourage you to move to five to 10 minutes and then expand from there and see what God does. It'll enrich your Bible study. It'll enrich your prayer time. It'll enrich everything that you do. Set a timer. That's the second thing. First thing is get a place, get a time. Two is set a timer. I might think, oh, that's that sounds kind of, you know, corny. Sounds like a little legalistic, ritualistic. You know, I want a free relationship with God. Ah, yeah. But sometimes we need just something to help us. Get your phone out. And here's where you can use your phone for a good measure. Instead of listening to all the texts coming through and all that, set a timer for three minutes. Set a timer for five minutes. Set a timer for 10 minutes. And just get still. And sit in a chair. Don't just lay down, although you could do that if you wanted to. But what I do is I get in a chair and I sit and I put my hand over my heart because I want God and myself to know that 
I'm connecting from the heart, not just my head. And I just take a deep breath. And I quiet myself. In my course on the book, I Will Not Fear, I talk about the practice of stillness and the importance of it in overcoming the fear factor and establishing victory over anxiety, stress, and worry. But I find that the breathing is a great way to tell my physiology, calm down, right? What is the first thing that we do oftentimes as parents to our kids? You say, calm down, take a deep breath. It's something that we do with Max all the time. We tell our daughter, Abby, that we work with them on, you know what, take a deep breath. And they often say, in through your nose, out through your mouth is a very helpful way to reset your fight or flight response, to reset yourself. And so I will do that and I will just quiet. And just as I see my mind wandering, I just rein it back in. I don't yell at myself, come on, why can't I get my thoughts together? I go, no, it's okay. Rein it back in because that's what God's doing. He wants to teach you how to be still. And in that, learn about who he is. And as far as thought, we want to simplify everything. I want to just learn to bask in the simplicity of being God's child, of being his son. I want to get out of slavery and into sonship. I want to get out of doing and get back to being. And so I find, and I don't know what you think about this, but I find the most comfortable relationships in my life, the best relationships, are the ones I can sit with and I don't necessarily have to have something to say and I'm still comfortable, right? Usually in relationships, we have to fill the dead space, right? You gotta talk and if there's a dead moment, you feel like you gotta fill it. It's a little awkward that things are quiet, but the best relationships are ones where there's a lull and there's a quiet and it's okay. That's where I wanna encourage you to get with God and learn how to practice this because it has a transform a transformational effect to really impact your life and your journey. So maybe it's a mental health issue. Maybe your physiology is showing lots of signs of wear and tear. Illnesses and disease are manifesting and you need to learn to quiet yourself and get your body into the rest of God to let healing flow forth. Maybe it's just learning to get out of go, go, go mode. Maybe you live a life where all the burdens are on you and you need a reset. I want to tell you that practicing stillness has been so beneficial for my life. So take these steps, practice it, get a copy of I Will Not Fear because in this, there's chapters in there. I talk more about this. I have an online program for that. If these episodes are a benefit to your life, would you do me a favor? Go to markdehesus.com, click on the donate button and take a moment and would you help support the work that we're doing? Even better yet, would you join our transformational partnership By doing so, you'll have access even to more courses and and information and resources that will help benefit your life and your journey. We're wanting to encourage a tribe of people that want to live as overcomers and want to discover the nuts and bolts of practically how to engage the transformational life. It's my goal and desire to provide insight and tools to help you to overcome. And so I'm taking everything in my journey sharing it with you, and praying it adds value to your life. Thank you so much for considering that, and we'll see you in our next episode. God bless you.